Also buried in here is a great amount of treasure, royalist treasure. But before you decide to come and dig here, you'll have to make friends with the headless ghost that protects the treasure. Hello and welcome to a wet, rainy day in Birmingham. My name's Richard Felix and I'm going to take you on a ghostly tour of Birmingham and the West Midlands. Over the past 10 years, I've been leading haunted tours to some of the most ghostly places in Great Britain. And I've taken in excess of 95,000 people on ghost walks. Some of those people talk to me, and I can assure you that people really do see ghosts. They're not all cranks, nutcases, people with a vivid imagination, or someone who's had too much to drink. There are ghosts, I promise you. I've seen a ghost, I've also heard a ghost. Some of the stories we're going to be hearing about are concerned with real spirits, or entities that actually do haunt the premises. They either love the building, love the person that they're haunting, or for some reason they're trapped. They're waiting to go to the light to be released, but for some strange reason, they are still caught up in this world when they want to go to another. Others, I believe, are nothing more than a recording. It's like pressing the replay button of a video player and seeing that ghost again. It's to do with tragic, traumatic, premature death. In fact, their time hadn't come. And the energy used by the body in resisting death, I believe, can cause that event just before death to be recorded into the fabric of a building. Perhaps the bricks, the woodwork, the mortar, even perhaps the soil. And then for some reason, that event is seen again. It may be the anniversary of the death, or the atmosphere may be the same. And you see them again. But I don't think it's a real ghost. I don't think it's any more frightening than watching John Wayne on a video. So, settle back, turn down the lights, stoke up the fire, and let me take you on a haunted tour of Birmingham and the West Midlands. And what better place to start this tour than in the centre of Birmingham, very close to St Chad's Roman Catholic Church near Snow Hill Station. In the olden days, there was a very old house here. It was a very haunted house. And on many occasions, screams and groans were heard coming from a room very close to the kitchen. A previous occupant of the house, a lady, was one day making a fire in that room. And all of a sudden, to her shock and horror, appeared a figure of a man and also the figure of a dog by the fireplace. The strange thing was that the man's face was totally devoid of any features. The woman's screams alerted the neighbours and one of the neighbours came rushing into the house just in time to see two hazy figures hovering above the mantelpiece. One still looked like a man and the other was of a dog and then they both vanished as did, of course, the neighbour and the occupant of the house. No one really knows who these ghosts were, but in 1829 the house belonged to a man who used to sell bodies to doctors for the furtherance of medical science. In olden days, most bodies were delivered to the Shire Hall to the surgeons, and doctors would pay up to two guineas for a freshly delivered body so they could carve it up dissect it just for the furtherance of medical science. This chap used to entice people into his house and then murder them. And they reckon that the screams and the groans that were heard coming from this room were the last cries of those poor unfortunate people that were murdered in this very house. This is 
Worley Park. To the left of me here, originally stood Worley Hall. It was then named Worley Abbey in commemoration of Hales Owen Abbey, which is not far away, because most of the stonework for the hall came from that abbey at Hales Owen. It was built by Hubert Galton, the famous Quaker and Birmingham gunmaker, mainly from his mother's money. She was one of the Barclays of Barclays Bank. And of course, there is a ghost, the Grey Lady of Worley that wanders along this trackway here and then disappears halfway along the trackway just before she gets to the woods. There are various stories about her. One is that they say that she was the murdered heiress of the Galtons who was mysteriously killed. And the other story is that she was a jilted bride and she actually committed suicide and they say that's why her ghost still wanders around here. Also seen along this pathway is the ghost of a Chinaman. No one's sure who he is. Could he possibly have been a faithful servant of the Galtons? Or I wonder whether he had something to do with the murder. No one will ever know. And now, a brief pit stop. I'm in a very old pub in the centre of Sutton Coalfield on Mill Street. This was formerly the Gate Inn. It's now, the case has altered. I suppose you could say, the gate has altered. And we're on Mill Street. This was a very old toll house going back about 200 years. And it has more than its fair share of ghosts. A landlady in 1975, was working behind the bar, she heard the door go, thought it was a husband coming back, thought no more about it, turned to look, and standing in front of her was a cavalier. He stood there for about 10 seconds before he finally disappeared. Didn't frighten her at all. They have problems with their toilets. And surprisingly enough, there are a lot of toilet ghost stories. We all laugh, I know, but whether it's something to do with energy, ectoplasm, water, no one really knows. But a gentleman in the toilets heard someone banging on the door. So he opened it, and there was no one standing there. And a lady sitting on the loo actually physically watched the bolt draw itself back. They brought in some ghost detectives to try and find out who or what it was. And about half past four in the morning, the gentleman with the landlady suddenly noticed a grey haze, a distinctly grey haze, about six foot high, person-shaped, standing in front of them. It lingered for between 15 and 20 seconds before it finally disappeared. No one knows who the ghost really is here. Perhaps it's one of the spirits behind the bar. No one really knows. I'm in Birmingham now at the crossroads, the crossroads of Kingsbury Road and Chester Road at Tyburn, Tyburn House. But why is it called Tyburn? There was a Tyburn at London where all the hangings took place, which is where marble arches now. They also hanged people at York. They had their own Tyburn. But of course you must remember that Birmingham in those days was only a very small place. The county town, of course, would be Warwick. So all hangings would have taken place at Warwick. So I wonder why this is called Tyburn, we're not sure. There are, of course, ghosts here on the crossroads. People were, to a certain extent, executed at the crossroads from time to time. Suicides were buried at the crossroads. And of course, witches were also buried at the crossroads. There's a ghost story here of a nurse from the Good Hope Hospital that was sitting on a stone bench somewhere over here 
She got up to return home and turned to look at the bench to make sure she hadn't left anything behind. And standing by the bench was a large, grey, hazy figure. It stayed there for about 20 seconds before it disappeared. And she made haste to get home rather quickly. There are one or two reasons why this ghost may be here. In 1745, a murder took place. When Bonnie Prince Charlie's soldiers were marching down to London, the Duke of Cumberland was waiting for them at Lichfield. And one of his colonels was around here. He asked the young boy the way to a local pub. The boy, unfortunately, had a deformed mouth and couldn't answer the colonel. The colonel straight away thought that the boy was a spy. He had him taken back and executed. They had him beheaded. And then they brought his body back here. They threw his head into a tree at Pipe Hayes and buried his body under the tree. In the 1900s, the tree was cut down and the skull was found still in the branches of the tree and underneath the body was found, or should I say, the skeleton. That was all that was left of him. There's another story, a girl called Mary Ashford, who was murdered after attending a party here at the Tyburn Inn on Whit Sunday. She was murdered by a man called Thornton, a farmer from this area, but he was acquitted. The people around here believed he murdered her and he was hounded out of the place, emigrated to America and died there. But strangely enough, in 1974, another murder took place around here. A girl that they say looked very much like Mary Ashford. And the Erdington CID asked for the notes, the original notes. They compared them. And would you believe the murderer, or the alleged murderer, was another man called Thornton. And he too was acquitted. There's also a ghost inside Tyburn House. So we'll go inside and investigate. And we're now in the wine cellars of the Tyburn House. And Stephanie, you're the wife of the relief manager. And um, it's now January the 15th, 2002. And you saw a ghost recently? Sunday. This, this Sunday, Sunday, just gone? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And you were in here? I started in here, yes. Came down here to get the wine. Yeah. Come in, got the wine off the shelves, what I wanted. Come back out the door. And we'll retrace your Switch steps. my lights up. Yep. Yep. Put my, my wines out. Yep. Lock the door. Come from there. We came to lock the door, but the door would not lock. Right. I could not lock. But it has. It, it has now. Yeah. But yeah. it would not lock on Sunday. So I left the door unlocked, picked me bottles of wine up, turned round. Yeah. Now you have problems with doors down here, yes. don't you? Yeah. The doors to the side they're kept locked because if you don't lock them, they they slam. You mean of their own? Not, it's not windy down here, though? Or? No, no, it's no drag, but they just slam and oh. customers can hear it in the, the lounge. And of course, it makes people jump as well, I should think. So they have to be kept locked for that reason. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then you, as we are doing now, continued along, continued along to the, the stairs, stairs, the wooden staircase, yeah? Got to the stairs. Yep. Came up the stairs. Yes. And I looked to the side of me. Someone knows, no, there's nothing there. So no, nothing. Yep, yep. Okay. So you saw no movement or anything like that? No. Nothing. No. Nope. Yes. And as I got onto this step, it jumped and it landed by the side of my What? A, a figure? Heard, a yeah, person? I did actually hear it go. Right. It landed. I heard it like a bang. Yeah. And turned to the side like that, and all I could see was this like black figure. By you? Here? By, yeah. by the side of me. Then what? Then it, it, it run down the steps and I turn like that. Yes. And it run through the cellar and I heard it clattering on the things in the cellar and on the... Yeah, the, the bottles, bottles and things yeah. down there. So it, it caught them or hit them or... Yeah. Or, and I presume you didn't go down to see... No, from that it, I just bolted up the stairs. I can imagine. I and just said to get these wine, these bottles of wine off me quick. Oh boy. Yeah. Now you're not the first person, are you, to no. see something? No. Yeah. I'm the ninth person, tenth person, sorry, in nine years of the Here on the spot? Here in the stairs, yeah. Well, I don't think we'll linger <laughs> on these stairs any longer, I think we'll go up here. 
Now there's also, um, in the bar on the right hand side here, yeah. the panel bar, um, things I believe have happened. Um, yeah. There's again a door problem, is there here? In yeah, it's this door apparently, this door slams shut. Um, this room's not been open for two years. This is not a drafty it's, place, no. is it? But since, since they've not helped open the bar, yep. this has since doesn't happen quite so often. Right, so it's when this people door, are around more. Yeah. This door, like, I mean, you cannot... Just... No, because it's got one of these uh, contraptions yeah. on it that stops but it, it slamming. slams shut the down. Wow. So it, it's either a ghost that's got a fetish for slamming doors, or a poltergeist, um, a ghost yeah, that, that's seeking, seeking attention. attention for some yeah. reason. A soul or a spirit that's still it's lingering that wants release. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I'm going. I'm not stopping <laughs> here any longer. <laughs> Stephanie, that's great. Thanks very much indeed. Only eight miles from the very centre of Birmingham lies the little village of Curdworth. And I'm standing in the graveyard in front of the Norman Church. During the English Civil War, there was a great deal of activity around here and a great amount of parliamentary and royalist soldiers are buried somewhere in unmarked graves in this graveyard. Also buried in here is a great amount of treasure, royalist treasure. But before you decide to come and dig here, you'll have to make friends with the headless ghost that protects the treasure. Also in this graveyard somewhere is the ghost of a lady wearing a green dress. Now it's unusual to have ghosts in graveyards because they normally haunt the places where they died rather than the place that they're supposedly resting. But this girl has been seen wandering around looking at gravestones. They believe that she's probably the girlfriend or the wife of one of the soldiers that was killed here during the English Civil War and they say that she committed suicide here somewhere in this graveyard, but nobody knows quite where. On frequent occasions, people ask me why we don't see modern ghosts, why they're always dressed in old-fashioned clothes. And I tell them it's because unless a ghost does something strange, like disappearing through the wall, or it's dressed as a monk, or in medieval costume, then we don't know it's a ghost. But here, on Station Road in Erdington, we have a modern ghost story to do with this phone box. A lady wearing a pink cardigan has been seen in this phone box on frequent occasions. Her house caught fire and she ran to this phone box to dial 999 to get the fire brigade. She then ran back to her house and went back in to save her children. She and her children perished during the fire. And on frequent occasions, her ghost has been seen here, frantically dialing for the fire brigade for help. In 1985, the phone box was replaced. It was originally one of the old red ones, and it was replaced for this modern phone box. And since that date, her ghost has never been seen again. In other words, there is now no one on the line. This magnificent Jacobean house behind me is Aston Hall. It was for many years the home of the Lords of the Manor of Aston. In front of the gates, is Aston Church and buried in that church are many members of the Holt family. This actual building here was built in 1635 by Sir Thomas Holt. Sir Thomas originally lived at Duddington Manor. He was a violent man and it's alleged that he actually killed his cook by splitting her head open with a meat cleaver in a fit of rage. He moved here and married 
a girl called Grace. She bore him 15 children and she was known locally as Grace Abounding. He then married again a girl called Anne who bore him no children, but she took a great dislike to one of his girls, her stepdaughter, and she persuaded her husband to incarcerate the poor girl in a small room at the top of the hall where she died 18 years later, totally insane. She is the white lady of Aston Hall that still haunts the place. In 1973, a group of spiritualists came here and held a seance. They contacted the girl and she told them that she haunted the building not because of her incarceration, but because of her great love of the building. She loved to walk in the long gallery and that is the place that most people that see the ghost have seen her. Still preserved in a glass case in the central library in Walsall is a severed arm and hand of what they believe to be a young girl. It was found in 1870 in the attic of the building behind me here, the White Hart Inn at Walsall. It was also found with a 17th century English Civil War sword. Nobody knows what they were doing in the attic. But this building is a very haunted building. Many strange occurrences take place in here. Footsteps along the landing, sobbing and crying. And on various occasions, very, very cold spots, as if someone has opened a window and an icy blast has come in just before the figure of a young girl dressed in white is seen. Now, this business of cold spots, if you were a ghost and you wanted to appear in front of someone or move something, then obviously you need energy, just as we all need energy to move and to, to talk. And so ghosts, of course, can't just plug into something to get the energy. Heat is energy and the spectre draws the heat from a room towards itself uses that energy to appear and then of course once that energy has been used it's a little bit like pulling out a 13 amp plug and of course the ghost vaporizes or disappears and um, one of the landladies here one night asleep in her bed she woke up and standing by the bed was the white spectral figure of a young girl. The room, of course, was cold, and then the girl disappeared. In 1955, one of the landlords here heard sobbing coming from the attic. And of course, the attic was never used by anybody. The landlord got up, went upstairs into the attic, and as he opened the door of the attic, the sobbing stopped. He put on the lights, and in the middle of the room was a big round table covered with dust. There was dust on the floor, but there were no markings, no footsteps. But as he went towards the table, he looked at the table and to his horror, he noticed that there was a little handprint on the table in the dust. Was that the handprint of the severed hand that is still preserved in the library at Walsall. We'll never know. And we're probably now in the most haunted place in the Midlands. Dudley Castle and Zoo behind me here. In 1750, the castle mysteriously burnt down. It burned for three days and the molten lead dripping from the roof made it look as if the whole hill was on fire. And of course, this place has got more than its fair share of ghosts. And with me this morning is Adrian Durkin, who is the keeper 
of Dudley Castle and Zoo. And Adrian, you actually take ghost walks amongst other things yes. around the castle. Yes, indeed we do. We, we have um, a lot of people who come to visit our ghosts and uh, they don't just occur in the castle. I mean, obviously the castle is the oldest landmark around here, yep. so that's where you'd expect the ghosts to be. But uh, down here, we've actually got one of the concrete buildings of the zoo, for which the zoo is actually quite famous. Yes. They're built by Bertolt Lubeckin, charming name, uh, in 1930 to 1937. Really? And rumour had it that uh, a couple wearing 1930s clothes could be seen walking round the top parapets of the enclosure there. Um, you know, perhaps some poor couple who were uh, um, lost in love, but yep. unfortunately the path of love did not run smoothly for them, and what they failed to achieve in life they have now managed in death, or whatever. It must be said that was a uh, story that I tended to take with a pinch of salt, Yes. until on one of the ghost watches that we did in, in cooperation with Parasearch, the Midland Psychical Research Group, um, one of our watchers was actually coming up here and, and saw a strange cloud, a completely unnatural cloud, mm. sort of drifting across the top of the enclosure. So now we tend to take that particular story just a little bit more seriously, and it has become sort of part of the pantheon of ghost stories that we do tell around the site. So they're not all old stories. Some of them go back a mere 50 or 60 years. Oh, yeah. See, everyone thinks that all ghosts have to be in medieval costumes, and That's it, but yeah. it's, it's not the case. No. But, of course, you don't think that the cloud is pretty high here. Well, of course, it couldn't be a, a low um, cumulonimbus or something. Right. That No? Anything's possible, but what, what was noticeable about this was it was a very small cloud, yeah. and it was, according to uh, our informant, behaving unnaturally. I'm not entirely certain what natural <laughs> cloud is, but clearly they felt this was unnatural, yeah. it was sort of drifting. So it's su certainly a supernatural experience. Well, it was was for the person who watched it, yes indeed. He, he certainly counts it amongst uh, one of the few that he's encountered. Yeah, that's, that's fine. And um, of course this isn't the only one, is it? Oh as, no, I, I, I think actually, um, you know, we're sort of nearly starting on a high point, because from now on uh, I'm afraid everything goes downhill. Oh, right. um, literally, rather than figuratively, we hope. Right. If you'd like to come. I'd love to. When I walked here, saw this gatehouse, I thought, there's got to be something ghostly to do with this, and I presume I'm right, am I? Indeed, yes. Yeah. Although, of course, in historical times, the topography wasn't quite like this, because all this area has been severely damaged by limestone mining. It went right up to the gateway of the castle. So originally, the slope would have been more gentle. Really? It would have been possible to ride or take a carriage up to that gateway. Um, I think you'd have a bit of difficulty today. Just a little. But the story goes that uh, it's quite well documented. During the English Civil War, the castle was besieged for the second time in 1646. Yes. Uh, Sir William Brereton's forces were over there. He was MP for uh, Cheshire. Parliamentarians, uh, inside, I presume. Absolutely. Yep. And inside was Colonel Leveson uh, with his garrison of about uh, <clears throat> about 400 uh, royalists. Yep. Anyway, um, Sir William had problems. He had almost no artillery train, so he wasn't going to smash down the castle. Yes. His soldiers hadn't been paid for about six weeks, Wonderful. and so they were in no mood to sort of storm the castle. Mm. Um, and really, the longer he sat outside the castle, the less money they were going to have and the worse position he was going to be in. Mm. So he really needed to get rid of the castle quickly, but at the same time, um, he didn't have the resources to do to this. Do, yep. So he was going to try and talk them out. And so he sent a message up to the castle. And that message would probably have been car carried by a drummer. Uh, they weren't drummer boys because of 17th century. Correct. Very large things sort of indeed. Style. Yes. So it would be a young man. Anyway, yeah. he was sort of trained to do a bit of furtive snooping around when he got in there. Anyway. Um, now, you would have been able to recognise him, even if he hadn't had his drum, because uh, drummers were much better dressed. Uh, they were actually, their clothes were paid for by their officers, yep. and so they, they, they were a bit of class. So, this young lad is alleged to have uh, walked up to the castle, and when he got to here or whatever, smack, a single shot rang out, and he fell dead. Right. And it was actually a double crime. Firstly, it was a crime against the rules of war, which stated oh, yeah. specifically that uh, musicians, drummers, were non-combatants. Correct, I mean, yes, if, yeah. if they got shot in the heat of battle, that was too Different. bad. Yeah. Serves them right to being yeah. there. But you didn't go out of your way to kill them. <laughs> Correct, Not yep. least because your enemy couldn't sound the retreat mm. if you potted off all his drummers. <laughs> so it was actually quite good to keep mm. them alive. So they were non-competent. And really, it was also a crime against the rules of fate, because 
a 17th century musket just is not that accurate. So to pick off somebody down here was with pretty good. With pretty good going. I mean, you yes. wouldn't actually hit a barn de door at 30 yards, would you? Ab absolutely no. So no, that was so, something. Uh, uh, so anyway, um, it is rumoured that this lad was killed yes, here. Yeah. Now, um, the story actually goes that he haunts the building over there. This white That's building right. here? Yes, absolutely. All right. Now, um, several manifestations, and quite a number recently, strangely enough. Um, what we actually get, uh, there was one occasion when one of the people here was working late in the evening, and he... Uh, um, suddenly became aware that somebody had come into the building. Now, he wasn't right. expecting this, he was locked in, yeah. and so he imagined it was the director or something coming back later. Usual time. story, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Reality. Um, walked, walked around the building and found nobody at all. He was completely on his own. Um, and so he, he actually sort of did a double take and then said, no, 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 I, I can't be imagining it, and went back to his work mm. somewhat uh, concerned. Yes. And he was doing the same thing uh, a few nights later, and the same thing happened again. And this time he was so filled with terror that he actually ran out of the building. Um, and to get out of the building, he had to come through an intermediate door, which actually slid to open. Yes. And in his panic, he tried to open it in a conventional way and ripped the door handle clean off. And I think this possibly this story is made even more frightening when you realise that this young chap was an accountant. And they're not noted for their imagination. <laughs> well, except that's the creative one. So, oh, boy. Um, that, that, that's one story. But uh, recently, we've, we've actually had uh, a couple of sightings uh, and some strange occurrences. Uh, one in the cash office where um, uh, it suddenly went incredibly cold and a, an automatic calculating machine on the other side of the room started calculating um, when there was nobody anywhere near it. Wow. And, uh, and then down in the cellar, um, one of our members of staff uh, actually went into the gents, which is down in the cellar, yeah. and as he went past the, the cubicle, um, saw out the corner of his eye that there was somebody in there, so he just walked of course. sort of washed his hands yep. or whatever, as you do. Uh, and the, the person in there was wearing the usual dark clothes, which actually on this side characterised the maintenance department. Yeah. And so when he came back, the cubicle was free, he used it, went upstairs. Um, somebody said, have you seen so-and-so, the head of maintenance? And the uh, chap replied, oh, well, I saw him downstairs a minute ago. And somebody else said, no, no, he's not been in the building this morning. Uh, and in fact, there was no, no, one else in the no way to account for this figure that was seen mm. in the loo. Um, so you've got to admire the ghost. I mean, he waited what, 400 years to use <laughs> to that use cubicle, the so yeah. there, there you go. That's amazing. But um, that, that is one of the more recent stories. I mean, we're, we're talking about um, uh, November 2001. Oh, really? That particular Very story. recent, when you think so, it's yes. only January yes, that's 2002 that's now. Right. We, we are talking about um, specifically things that are still happening. Yeah. Most of the sites around here are, I think, what you might active. call active. Yes, that's indeed. wonderful. So, um, shall we carry on up? Shall we do that? Yes, indeed. We've now arrived actually at the castle. Now, obviously, most of the stories must um, come from this actual site, I would imagine. Yes, indeed. Uh, but strangely enough, um, some of them, I'm sure, like many ghost stories you've encountered, are ghosts that don't have stories. Oh, yeah. So um, we, we have an interesting problem here, whereby we actually had a group of people who were on a sponsored um, ghost watch around the castle uh, on Halloween, uh, what, about five or six years ago, yeah. something like that, raising money for hospitals. Mm. And um, uh, they were actually in another part of the site, which is also haunted. Yes. Perhaps we'll have time to visit that later. Right. But um, around about 11 o'clock, uh, when nothing had happened, and then it hadn't happened some more, and then nothing happened again, <laughs> and then after that nothing happened, yep. um, they began to get a bit bored. I'm and sure. so uh, a percentage of the group, I think sort of about five out of seven of them, decided to go for a walk. And they came up to here, where we are now, yeah. and they looked up at the tower, and walking on the parapet at the top there, they seemed to see a figure. And um, uh, quite recognisable as a figure, yes. not much detail. <clears throat> Bear in mind we're 11 o'clock at night. Yes. Now you might think it would be dark, but in fact all the light coming up from Dudley reflects back. Yeah. So particularly if you have a cloudy night, it's actually quite bright yes. up here. So although you can't see in detail, you can always see, you know, there, there's enough light yes. Yes. It's not to get pitch black. vision. Mm. And so they saw this figure walk, and they, walk, they watched it for quite a while. 
Um, being intrepid, brave explorers, they, they didn't have the nerve to go up there oh. and find out what was going on. <laughs> Instead, they went back to their associates and um, w they told their associates what they'd seen. And need to say, the other two didn't believe a word. Of course not. You're winding <laughs> us up. So it, about uh, one o'clock in the morning, they all decided to come up here. Uh, one of the group was, I'm told, a slightly older lady, and she actually had a car with her. So they put some lights into the boot, yeah. and um, she drove up here, and the rest of them walked. And when the other six got up here, there she was standing by. Her, I can see it, I can see it, she's saying. And they all looked up, and they all saw this figure. Now. If the possibility is that it was somebody having them on, <laughs> which of course everyone had been walking up and down there for a long, for long time, two hours, you know, on, <laughs> in, in a October, November mm, night. No, I wouldn't. So that doesn't seem very likely, no. and they all saw it. Um, they did try the lights, but the lights were no real use no. because um, that sort of range. No. Uh, you, you weren't getting any great illumination. In no. fact, they did tend to think that they got a better view of it when they weren't trying to use lights, really. Uh, in the light, That's there amazing. just didn't seem to be anything there. So, there you go. But that, that is amazing, because, I mean, as I say, on frequent occasions, ghosts don't normally appear to audiences. Uh, well, there's, there's, there's a codicil to this, which is also quite interesting, because they, they were all duly amazed, went back, and decided, uh, what, sort of four o'clock in the morning, come up again. Huh? When they came up again, some of them reckoned they could still see it, but some of them could Couldn't, see nothing no. at all. Um, uh, and the interesting follow-up to this is that one of the people on that um, uh, tour was actually a reporter, and she actually went to say for the newspaper that they had seen a ghost, and their, their editor wouldn't actually let them print it. Oh, so apparently, amazing. you can say anything you like about the Queen, the Prince of Wales, yeah. the Prime Minister, start admitting you've seen a ghost, and you lose no all the credibility. What a shame. So she, she wasn't, at, so she had to say some of the members of the group believed yeah, they yeah, had yeah, seen, yeah. and so so, th so that was it, the, the end of the story. We've never That's had amazing. a repeat sighting of that. Really? But, I mean, on the ghost tours that we r run around Dudley in various years, we'll, we'll normally bring up two groups a yep. week. Stand them here, exactly. tell them the story. Tell them the story, um, and, and they've never seen anything. And no one else uh, has ever stood at this point and looked up there right, and, seen and, it. and seen anything. No, absolutely nothing. Nice one, that is. So, so there you go, J very strange story. Yeah. Shall we but go true. a little further in? <clears throat> yes, let's. When our visitors come in here, we usually ask for guesses as to what this is. So of it comes course. out as a horse's drinking trough. It's a bath! And <laughs> this is, of course, a... Coffin. Absolutely. A typical medieval coffin. Yes, with and a head like space. most medieval coffins, it's actually relatively small. Mm. I, mean, uh, I can't get into it. I'm nope. too wide and I'm mm. certainly nowhere near long enough. So this is for your average sort of five foot six, really rather yeah. small medieval person. And this coffin uh, was allegedly taken from uh, Bottom Church, that's to say St Edmund's Church yes. in Dudley. It has no connection with the castle at all, no. it's just sort of arrived here yeah. uh, by virtue of the fact that nobody else knew where to put it. Yes. However, this isn't the only coffin. We do, in fact, have another one, and I'd like to tell you a little story about oh, yes. that. Yes, please. A much, much larger, larger coffin. coffin. Yes, Gosh. Indeed. This one is for somebody who must have been sort of six foot six in his mailed shoes. Absolutely. And of course, this coffin came from Dudley Priory, and right. that is where the Lords of Dudley Castle were buried. Mm. And in fact, it's rumoured to have an owner, John de Summery, the bad baron of Dudley Castle. Oh. Now, um, uh, his, his idea of a good day out was to sort of wander around the locality, burn uh, his neighbours' houses, unless they actually bought him off yeah. uh, with money for his Let's Build Dudley Castle fund. <laughs> I have actually suggested this is a technique for raising mm. money for the restoration. I think it's a wonderful for idea. For some unknown reason, my boss seems to think it's a little politically incorrect. <laughs> so anyway, uh, John Dudley um, died in, 60, uh, in uh, 1321, yep. and I don't think anybody was too cut up about that, certainly mm. not as many as had been when he was alive. <laughs> And he was laid, allegedly, to rest in Dudley Priory. Now, uh, when Dudley Priory was partially excavated uh, in the 19th century to turn it into a romantic ruin, yes. a number of these great coffins were dug up, and in fact this was taken away and put in Priory Hall. Yes. And Priory Hall has recently been renovated as the local borough um, birth, marriages and deaths department, and so the coffin was taken out and brought Understand up here really, as, yes. as, a, as a fitting resting place. Yeah. Although, of course, nobody would actually have been buried in Dudley Castle. No. Well, at that time, 
Um, there were really no um, roofed buildings in the castle except the one we're in. Mm. And uh, the story goes that, in fact, we had a couple of cleaners. They were sisters, and they were, were actually doing the floor in here. Um, and uh, uh, one of them was uh, caught short, dare I say, mm -hmm. and, and had to go off to the nearest loo, which yep. is quite a walk away, leaving her sister in here sort of happily hoovering away. And the sister, who was over by the door, looked up and saw, standing next to this coffin, a pair of feet. Just feet? Looked up a little bit higher. Ah and saw that they were booted feet. Right. Looked up a little bit higher and saw that they were wearing long leather thigh length riding boots. Yeah. Looked up a little bit further and saw nothing at all. <laughs> so dear sir, you've heard of headless ghosts, but Dudley is the only place in England where they're headless right down to the thigh. My goodness me. But of course, the thing to bear in mind is, as you can see, the coffin is risen, rid, is, is, is cut asunder. Oh yeah, I noticed it's and, absolutely split in yes. half. And so what we seem to have here is not a haunted <sighs> coffin, but half a haunted coffin. So, half of the ghost of John de Summary does seem to um, oh do my whatever goodness. a half ghost can actually manage Isn't to it? do um, in here. But the interesting thing is that since we moved this in, we've actually done some restoration work in the castle, and now this is no longer the only roofed building yes. that we have. And we're going to move in next door because there are some stories that may or may not be related to this coffin that I'd like to tell you in there. Oh boy. Right. And the second part of the story? Well, we, we've moved now into the castle shop. Now, up until 1994, this area was completely roofless. Right. But uh, in a major restoration project that um, encompassed the whole of the castle, we've actually put a roof in yep. and we've got a new visitor centre and this is the shop. You see it here in its closed season. We'll be reopening at uh, the spring half term. Yes. Well, um, we have obviously have staff in here during yeah. the day, and um, those staff have reported a series of quite strange occurrences. Uh, when the centre first opened, they, they complained that they could hear the sound of animals. And so uh, our technical department came up and they went through all the heating system just to make sure, you know, a stray cat or whatever hadn't. Yeah. Mind you, it is a zoo, isn't well, it? Well, <laughs> yes, yes, not, not totally unlikely. No. Mind you, I think we normally notice if any of the <laughs> important stock went missing, yep. you know. Yep. Um, so uh, <clears throat> the fact is that um, they checked and they couldn't find anything. Well, then the ladies in here changed their story just a little bit and they, they started saying they could hear horses. Ah. Now, even here, we haven't got horses that are small enough mm -hmm. to get into the central heating no. duct. <laughs> Added to which, um, one thing they didn't know, but we did, was the fact that when this area was excavated, under the ground, they actually found the bones of quite a lot of horses. Uh -huh. um, now, we're, we're at a loss to explain these because yes. uh, they could have been the horses of the garrison of the um, mm -hmm. English Civil War siege that were actually slaughtered for food. Of course. But the archaeological dating seemed to suggest they were later. And we do have some references to um, a, a butcher actually hiring out part of the building once the castle yep. became disused. So you've got this idea Horse of meat, yeah. sticking up his side saying best English beef yes. you know, in the usual way. Yes. Um, and we know what was really here. So there, there were certainly joints of meat, uh, joints of horse meat uh, being left yeah. here just to rot, which, which we found buried. Gosh. So, so that, that is a connection which the people here didn't know about. Mm. Um, <clears throat> then, uh, again, relatively recently, we, we got people reporting uh, they'd, they'd seen a figure. And, and the most reliable, the most reasonable report uh, comes in fact not from this year, but from last Christmas, when we had a couple of people working in here, two of them working together. They were witnessing what each other saw. And um, now, with when you experience a ghost, often you're at a loss to explain precisely what you have experienced. Yeah. So what they actually felt was this door definitely open. Yes. Now we know that can happen because yep. if you get the wrong sort of through uh, the building, yep. it happens. And then they reckoned that they felt a figure moving through here and then moving on into this storage <laughs> area here. But they saw nothing. They saw a shadow going round the corner. Right. That's what they seemed to feel. Yeah. Well, a few weeks later, 
the same thing happened again, but by then the storage room isn't open to the public, and so right. usually there are things across the doorway. And in fact, in this particular case, there was this box of sponge animals. Yes. That was across the doorway here. Right. And the same thing happened. The door opened. They seemed to feel somebody coming through, and when they looked, that was all moving. The sponge oh. animals were bouncing backwards and forwards. Something had brushed somebody past them. Had just brushed past them. Exactly. Wow. So that was the story. But even then, uh, the stories don't actually finish there, because um, uh, recently we've had a couple of new items in here. Yeah. Particularly, we've had these rather nice little uh, preserves, which you can buy for mum and granny and all that. Yep. Uh, when we actually had them, there were quite a lot more jars than we could accommodate. Yes. And so the staff actually put them into little pyramids on the top because they thought that looked nice. Yes. One of our regular members of staff was actually off. She, she went off for a long period of time to have a small operation. Yeah. And we had a number of standby members of staff in here. And they obviously didn't get on with the local inhabitants dead or alive because on one occasion, um, with nobody standing anywhere near it, all the jars were just swept off the top of the cabinet onto the floor. None of them broke. And that, really? Yes. Oh, and it's a, a flag floor. floor? Yeah, yeah. And um, that actually happened twice. And one of the other uh, experiences they have in here concerns this spot precisely, yeah. where this stand of key rings was. Now, Obviously, the people who make this stand of key rings don't actually want their produce thrown onto the floor. <laughs> and so it's actually pretty robust. Indeed. And, yeah. um, you can't knock it over in a hurry, because if you knock it hard enough, it moves around. That's right, yes. And, it, and it's supposed to do that. Yeah. that. That's what happens. So you can't knock it over, and yet this whole stand was actually knocked over onto the floor. So it was physically, it was physically lifted or pushed. Lifted and well, yes. the only way to because knock it over is to trip it over, yes. to, to pull it over yeah. the foot. That's the, the only way to make it move. Wow. And nonetheless, this, this threw itself onto the floor. <laughs> so we, we had an interesting point there. Um, and shortly after that, we had a ghost watch in here. Mm. So we, we set up all the equipment and nothing happened. As always happens on our ghost watches, yeah. nothing, nothing happened. Yeah. And various people, including myself, came through from the uh, visitor centre and when we came to about here we were suddenly cold. Ice cold. And then moved on and we weren't. And everybody in that group was able to experience this. It was wow. a specific cold yeah. spot in this area. just here. Couldn't be measured. They actually had with them thermometers yeah. of the sort that are used by you know, the health department yeah, measuring yes. yeah. um, refrigerators in shops. And they did not register a drop in temperature. But, but, but physically, you could. Everybody who was here registered that drop in temperature on that spot. Now, whether these are related to John mm. de Summary, whose mortal remains were in the coffin mm. in just beyond that, only wall, next door. Yeah. It's it's hard to say, but certainly one of the things about this building is that basically, although the fabric is old, the building itself is new. Yes, of course. And that door. Is new. Oh, yes. yeah. That was not through as part yeah. of the reconstruction in 1994. So. so, the fact is that any ghosts using that are actually ghosts that have adapted to a new door that yes, wasn't indeed. there in medieval that times. That is quite amazing. So, so it is, it is quite, quite surprising. Again, one of the thoughts that runs through our mind, uh, because the young ladies we employ uh, tend to be sort of uh, school leavers and students and things like that, which is a classic age for um, uh, poltergeist phenomena. Hmm. Again, you wonder whether we're actually talking about a strictly haunting yeah. thing going yeah. on here, or perhaps some sort of poltergeist. Absolutely. Phenomena. Sounds like it, Difficult it? to say, but that's the story. Now, before you go, yes. I would just like to introduce you to one of our ghosts. I would sure love to meet one of your ghosts. Let's go outside. Tell me, Adrian, am I going to be frightened? I rather doubt oh, it. Oh dear, that's a shame. <laughs> Okay, but 
Okay. Well, I'm looking. I can't. I can't see anything. Oh, Adrian. Well, actually, you're only really going to be able to see this ghost at night. But nonetheless, oh. I am going to be able to show it to you. Um, an interesting story. Uh, our, on part of the ghost tour, our customers are brought through here. Yes. And as usual, um, the ghost. Uh, leader had brought them through here and then they'd gone off to another location and a lady came up to him and said tell me if anybody sees ghosts does everybody see them or is it normally just one person and uh, he replied well my experience is that in fact it is normally just one person you know it's a single person yep. or just a couple of people who experience it not the whole group she said, because when we were in that kitchen room which is where we are now she said I I'm sure I saw somebody in the upstairs room, a, a woman with a long skirt with her head perhaps hooded or, 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 or sort of hanging down a little yeah. bit. And um, this information was in due course passed on to me. And uh, when a little while later I had occasion to be taking a, 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 another party around, I realized what could possibly have been the reason yeah. for this story occurring. Now, if we look up here, you can see up beyond that there is a oh, doorway up yes. there. Yes. And beyond that, you can actually see the uh, shape of Shoulders. The, 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 the rockery beyond. Yep. Now, if we come back a little bit, what yes. you'll see is that there is actually oh. an area of sloping roof. So if you take yes. that as a head, a shoulder, and then the sloping roof. Now, just yes. imagine that in the dark, yes. where you've got a lighted sky, because Address. the sky around here always is. Oh, yes, 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 and yes, yes. And you would actually get that, the, the effect of somebody standing up at first floor, looking down onto people in here. So you just imagine, you can only see that from a couple of places. If you yeah. go two or three steps in either direction... Then you've lost it. It disappears entirely. Yes. So it's but, just uh, exactly this, this you spot here. In the corner of your eye, yeah. as you walk by, and then you turn to see if you'd really seen it. Yes. But you'd have gone you've lost one it. step by then, and it would and you've have lost gone. It. You would have had yes. your ghostly experience, and then it would have gone. So I do think when we're thinking about ghosts, we have to bear in mind that people genuinely see these things. Yes, indeed. But what we have to work out is what it is they've genuinely seen. Absolutely right, yeah. Because, of course, one in, was it? Um, Eight out of ten ghost stories can actually be accounted for. Indeed, yes. The other two you've got it's to worry the other about. The two that you really want to investigate. Yeah. Shall we look a little further? Shall we do just that? So, um, you, you obviously do ghost tours around the castle. Dudley itself, I presume? That's right, yes. The, the uh, original Dudley Ghost Tour uh, usually runs on Thursdays during the spring and the autumn when we have the right sort of weather conditions yep. for it. And of course, on weekdays uh, around the castle, we do actually tell the story of Dudley's uh, ghosts and the ghosts of the castle. And we, we do that on all days when the zoo and castle is open, which is in fact every day except Christmas as a general rule. Really? So um, uh, any high season day, if you come here, you can normally pick up with a ghost tour. Wonderful. Can I show you a little more? Let's go search for Let's some more, shall we? Let's go walk around, yes. And, um, yeah, come Just go keep the kitchen now. Oh, right. Huge. Oh, well, it would look at the be. size. I Can mean, you imagine the it? The man yeah. here sort of fancied himself as being the king of England, really. So, exactly. Uh, he he yeah. wanted a rich yeah. and powerful kitchen for that. Yeah. And the servery. And standing here, gripping the rails tightly on the top of a very windy tower at Dudley, what better place to finish a tour of the haunted West Midlands and Birmingham. Birmingham at the back of me here with the tower. I'm sure now, after hearing some of the stories and recollections, that you realise that people actually do see ghosts. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do sleep well and don't have nightmares. <laughs>